back into the show. Kitten on the Keys is a Bay Area native known for her unique interpretation of 1920s performances. Ranging from burlesque blues to Tin Pan Alley, she captivates audiences with the way she tickles the ivories. Joining us now is Kitten herself, Suzanne Ramsey. Suzanne, thank you for joining us oh, here on the show. thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Yes, we are so excited to learn a little bit more about your cabaret performances. Now, when it comes to cabaret, maybe for those who don't quite understand what it is. Can you give us an overall glimpse? Sure. I believe that cabaret is um, a smaller, more intimate crowd with an instrument, and you're performing for those people, usually um, curated songs that kind of have an overall meaning, and it's just really fun, kind of different from a concert. It does sound really fun. I've never been to a cabaret performance. I'd love to even go watch you. That would, that would be great. Yeah, I've been, I've been bringing cabaret to um, San Francisco since the late 90s. I had to think there for a minute. <laughs> been here a while. <laughs> Well, when did you start taking piano? Because that is one of your instruments of choice that you use in your yes. performances. Yes. Well, being a Bay Area native, uh, I think all kids, a rite of passage is they had to have piano lessons. Really? Dance lessons growing up in the Bay Area. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah. So my brothers and I, we all played. My grandma bought our first piano. I still have that piano to this day in my apartment in San Francisco, and I love it. It's oh been my goodness. piano since I was six. Wow. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. So it's, it, it, you, it probably holds a very special place oh, in your heart. Oh, absolutely. I love it. And um, I kind of got tired of piano teachers telling me what to do, and I preferred playing, like, Shirley Temple songs. So I would, like, cut Sunday school and, like, watch Shirley Temple and then learn <laughs> the music. And then music became fun for me. Uh-huh. And I, like having a good time of so. course and that's what cabaret is all about definitely yes it, we have the highs and we have the lows and the dramatics but definitely a fun uh and also kind of you could talk about politics and what's going on yeah a curated show make make a little comedy out of it correct D absolutely we have <laughs> we need to laugh in this day and age absolutely yes and so it's nice to uplift audiences and take away from what's been going on well let's talk about what sets you apart makes you a little different in the cabaret world now you have the 1920 style going on which definitely is to you mm -hmm. tell us a little bit more about that well i uh like i said i cut sure i cut sunday school to watch shirley temple and i worked in a vintage clothing store in san francisco for many years and all we did is play vintage music and I uh, became friends with well-known sheet music collectors and started finding this really hard find to find music and the songs were very well crafted back then wonderful word play I love the double entendre where it's saying something all innocently but there's this undercurrent of <laughs> some salaciousness and that's yeah. super fun for me awesome so that's part of your performance mm -hmm. what else would you say in your opinion sets you apart in the cabaret performing world well I, I like to have a good time I love the naughtiness I love the silliness I also seek out some really unusual songs that that aren't really normal for people to hear on a day-to-day -day basis and i like introducing these lost long gems to people i also like taking modern songs um and reinterpreting them in a new way mm -hmm. and and people people kind of are, are liking that, like taking a pop song and making it very dramatic or very, very beautiful, just like taking it in different places than what it's, what you usually hear it as. And that's so interesting. Can you, can you explain your process in taking, let's say, a hit popular song mm -hmm. and turning it into something that you could perform that people, in the fact that people recognize it, but no, it's different? That, yeah, sometimes they don't always recognize that. I get a like, what was that? <laughs> like, for instance, I like this example, Prince's Little Red Corvette. And I take it and I really slow it down and I make it very dramatic and very, very, very beautiful, very almost quiet. And it, it kind of like, you know, hopefully we'll send some little tingles up you. But just to kind <laughs> yeah. of hear it in a different, in a, in a different way, mm -hmm. that's a really fun one to do. Well, let's get into your journey a little okay. deeper here. Now, you said that you grew up playing instruments, mm -hmm. which is what first sparked your interest Correct. in performing. But what else about music, what, what about it made you passionate to perform? It just felt, 
it felt right. It's like, I'm not good at doing a lot of things. I'm kind of clumsy, but for some reason, I know how to play the piano. <laughs> and people seem to enjoy it. And I think that um, it makes my brain feel good. It makes my body feel good. When I walk out of playing at an event, I'm like on cloud nine and I feel really good. Uh -huh. And I guess I have like Dr. Footlights, like I don't wanna go to sleep. I'm like, wow, that was really cool. And I just feel really grateful that I get to still live in the Bay Area as a working musician and I'm um, having the time of my life. I've been really enjoying it lately. Which is so important to enjoy Definitely. and to love what you do. Now, when speaking specifically about cabaret performances, that's different than, you know, maybe the average artist who goes on tour, whatever mm -hmm. it is. What made you want to specifically get into cabaret? Can you remember your first performance? Uh, I, th I think so. I think that it was the, the um, ability to take all these different songs and genres and try to create a narrative, like say in an hour. And I love like rock and roll. I grew up on rock and roll and having this kind of like rock and roll cabaret excited me like David Bowie was like, to me, the ultimate rock and roll uh, cabaret artist with certain songs. And I'm like, wow, I can take this stuff that I have loved throughout my life and reinterpret it. And it, it just is like I've been doing it anyways at home. I might as well bring it to an audience. Wow. That's so, so you actually, without even realizing it, you were pretty much doing cabaret already. And you're yes. like, I might as well let other people enjoy this and, and watch me perform. It's crazy. Like, I still have <laughs> sheet music from the 70s when I was a kid that <gasps> I bought in downtown Lafayette. That's incredible. I know. And then I'll, I'll play it. And, and it's... Uh, it's really fun. So basically, I was doing it all along, and I didn't know it. <laughs> well, now that you're here today, mm -hmm. you're a performer, and like you said, you've been in the Bay Area performing cabaret for many years now. Where do you see yourself going from here? What, what's the end result with your performance? What's really exciting is I just had a, a fabulous Zoom meeting last week, and I get to return to Paris, which is a big, on October 1st, uh -huh. which is a huge cultural place for cabaret, where cabaret is I think was like the epicenter of cabaret. Uh -huh. And um, I'm going to be working with some uh, songwriters there and I'm going to be recording. That's really exciting to me to be able to travel with what I do. Uh -huh. And I think that's the next step. And I'm just going to continue doing what I'm doing and, and bringing it to, we have Flower Piano coming up in San Francisco in Golden Gate Park in the Botanical Garden. I'll bring a little of the cabaret there. And uh, I just feel like um, with the world opening back up again, as long as I'm careful, I'm going to be able to continue to do this and spread joy to others. Yeah, and share so much love and joy through music. Congratulations on that. Thank By the you. way, that's very exciting. I'm like, <laughs> I know. It's, I can't, like, I'm like, pitch me, pitch did it me. sound weird coming out? You're like, wow, this is really well, happening. Well, it's just crazy telling, you know, it just feels really weird to let the cat out of the bag, but it is happening. That's exciting. And I'm, like, working really hard on that, so. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm sure that the end product is going to be phenomenal. One more, I have one more thing for you. Sure. Before I let you go, Suzanne, when people do come to your shows, Mm -hmm. What is it that you hope they take away? I hope they take away um, hearing music in a different light, hearing their favorite songs in a different way, but also realizing that, like, I'm playing this particular song because it's kind of like this underlying little message about what is maybe going on in the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, I hope that uh, they realize, they're like, wow, that was really cool. And, and just bringing out some happiness and good vibes. <laughs> Which is amazing. We need more people like you in this world. Now, you said they could catch you at Golden Gate Park. Anywhere else people can look forward to seeing Definitely. you? Definitely. I have um, several residencies here in San Francisco. The first Thursday of the month, I'm at the Madrone Art Bar, which just won best one of the top uh, 10 best bars in San Francisco. Congratulations to the Madrone. Yeah, congratulations. That's cool. I also play at the right spot on the second Tuesday of every month. They have a full restaurant and it's a San Francisco institution. I used to go there in the 80s and I've been playing there for about 25 years. And then- That's awesome though. It's crazy. <laughs> I play for um, Dandy Drag King Cabaret, which is a fun queer gender bending show at the San Francisco Oasis that happens quarterly. And I also play at the Royal Cuckoo Market in the Mission. So I'm happily spreading the joy of 
tickling the ivories and the accordion and ukulele and song all over town. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show, talking about cabaret and spreading that joy we need it, especially yes, in today's excellent. world. Excellent. <laughs> thank you for having me.